physics. All right, today we're gonna to talk about elastic collisions. And so to do that, we're gonna take a look at the simple situation of a three kilogram ball travel along with some initial velocity, and it's going to elastically collide with a five kilogram ball. Uh, now, when this elastic collision occurs, they're not gonna stick together like they would in an inelastic collision. These two balls are going to bounce off each other. So you can think of these like giant bowling balls if you want. And what we're gonna solve for in this problem is the final velocity of each of these balls. Now, because the two balls aren't going to stick together, they're both going to have different final velocities. So we're gonna to have to come up with those final velocities independently. And you'll see that can be a little tricky. So after this collision, this ball is gonna be moving with some final velocity. I'm gonna call this V final for the three kilogram ball. And this one's gonna be moving with some velocity. We'll call this V final for the five kilogram ball. So just like any other collision, an elastic collision conserves linear momentum. All collisions conserve linear momentum. And so that means the initial momentum in this problem is going to equal the final momentum in this problem. Now, because these two balls do not stick together, uh, they're going to have different initial velocities. You can see this one's moving at four meters per second and this one's moving at zero, as well as different final velocities. So we're gonna to have to be a little bit careful in how we go through and expand out our terms for momentum. So let's look first at our initial momentum term. All right, so looking at the initial. Okay, so looking at the initial momentum of this system, that is the momentum of this ball plus the momentum of that ball. The initial momentum is equal to our three kilogram balls momentum, that is three times four, plus the momentum of this ball right here, that is five times zero. And this gives us an initial momentum of 12 kilogram meters per second. Now we know momentum is gonna be conserved and so we can say the final momentum is in fact going to be 12 kilogram meters per second. But you're gonna see there's an issue with that. I'll show you exactly what that issue is here. So let's take a closer look at this final momentum term. Momentum final is equal to the final momentum of our three kilogram ball, that is, the mass of the three kilogram ball times its final velocity, that is V final of the three kilogram ball. Plus we have the final momentum of our five kilogram ball, that is five times V final for five kilogram ball. And we can set these two terms equal to each other per this equation right here. And we come up with an equation that we would think allows us to solve for the final velocities. But the issue is, if you look at this equation, we have two unknowns and only one equation. So in looking at an elastic collision exclusively through the lens of linear momentum, we find we can't solve the problem. And so in order to solve this problem, what we need to do is go back to what an elastic collision really is. An elastic collision occurs when two objects collide and don't stick together. And part of the mechanics of that is that linear momentum is conserved, but additionally, in an elastic collision, kinetic energy is also conserved. All right, so let's take a look at the conservation of energy in order to solve this problem. All right, so since we have an elastic collision, that means kinetic energy is going to be conserved and so let's go through and take a look at each of these terms individually. So first let's look at initial kinetic energy. Now initially we just have this three kilogram ball moving along at four meters per second. That's a three, not a two, I swear. It's four squared. One half mv squared, plus the kinetic energy of this ball right here, that's a big fat zero. Now our final kinetic energy, that's a little bit more complicated. That's gonna be the final kinetic energy of this ball right here. So that's gonna be one half times its mass times the final velocity, that's VF3 squared, plus the final kinetic energy of this ball. That's gonna be one half times five VF5 squared. And we're simply gonna equate these two. Now I'll actually work this one out. Uh, one half three times four squared, that is 24 joules. 
And so we're gonna set 24 joules equal to this term right here. And again, we wind up with an equation that looks like it should allow us to solve for the two final velocities. But again, we have an equation with two unknowns in it. Now, if we stop for just a second and think about this, what we've come up with here are two equations and two unknowns. And for anybody who's taken any algebra, you know when you've got two equations with two unknowns, you can solve for your two variables. Now, if you want to go through and do this, be my guest, but it is an algebraic nightmare. And so to save us from going through all this algebra, we're going to use something called the elastic collision equations. So these are the elastic collision equations. And while these look kind of scary and confusing, realize all they do is they take the initial values of two different objects, in this case our three and five kilogram objects, and uses them to calculate the final velocities of each object. Really all it does is it takes these two equations and combines them and rearranges them for V1 and V2. Now I say V1 and V2, object one and two are simply the, not the masses of the objects, but there's simply our two objects. We could call this object one and this object two. Now, which object we choose to call object one versus object two does not matter. All we need to do is just treat this like a great big plug and chug situation and fill in our values. So first let's go through and find the final velocity of object two, that's gonna be our five kilogram ball. So plug in our masses, if this is object two and this is object one we wind up with two times mass one. So that's gonna be two times three over the sum of the two masses. That's three plus five multiplied by the initial velocity of object one. So that's gonna be four minus this whole term here. Now we've got the difference in masses over the sum of masses and that's all fine and dandy, but I wanna look at this V2 right here. In this problem, because this object started at rest, that means in this problem, this whole term is going to be zero because V2 is zero. So I don't care about the difference or sums of masses. And so in working this out, we find the final velocity of object five is going to be three meters per second. Looking at the final velocity for object one or three kilogram block. Following this equation, we're looking at first the differences in masses. That is three minus five. Be careful not to do five minus three here. That would be incorrect. Over the sum of the masses, that is three plus five. Multiplied by the initial velocity of object one, that's four. And again, we're gonna have plus this whole term, but again, I'm not really all that concerned with what this term is because there's a V2 here and we know the initial velocity for this object right here was zero. So this is actually going to give us negative one meters per second. And this is a little bit of an interesting result here. We got a negative out of this. So let's talk about what that negative means. These velocities are vectors, and we're saying everything to the right is positive. So when the elastic collision equations kick out a negative final velocity, that really just means this block in the end is not moving to the right at one meter per second. It's actually gonna be moving to the left at one meter per second. So what we have in all of this is the final velocity for each of these objects. This block is gonna be moving to the left at one meter per second, this one to the right at three meters per second. Uh, now, if you go back through and check this, you'll find the momentum was in fact conserved. We could plug these numbers in here to this equation to see that linear momentum was conserved. We could plug these final values in here to see that kinetic energy was conserved. And the important takeaway in all of this is that in elastic collisions, both linear momentum and kinetic energy are conserved. And we have this useful tool called the elastic collision equations, which can be used to help us solve for the final velocity of both objects in this collision. So that is elastic collisions.
And that's all for now.